Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Jason and I'm a librarian for San Francisco Public Library and I'll be one of your panelists today. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that I am in San Francisco, California on the unceded ancestral homeland of the Ramatushaloni, who are the original inhabitants of the San Francisco Peninsula and continue to live, work and play here today. As indigenous stewards of this land and in accordance with their traditions, the Ramatushaloni have never ceded, lost nor forgotten their responsibilities as the caretakers of this place, as well as for all peoples who reside in their traditional territory. We wish to pay our respects by acknowledging the ancestors, elders, and relatives of the Ramatush community and by affirming their sovereign rights as First Peoples. Thank you. And thank you for being here with us for our more than a month, our celebration of Black History Month at San Francisco Public Library. We want to emphasize that reflection, open dialogue, interdisciplinary education, and shared advocacy needs to take place in our communities during Black History Month, as well as all year round. So check out our more than a month webpage to see our upcoming events, amazing artists, awesome book lists, and more that align with the 2022 national theme, Black Health and Wellness. So now I'd like to introduce you to my wonderful colleagues who will be joining me today. We have San Francisco Public Library, teen librarian Rachel Fiega, and San Francisco Unified School District librarian Ayana Thompson. Before I have you say a bit more about yourselves, I have to acknowledge something that I've been told multiple times by other BIPOC librarians, and that is that we are the unicorns of the librarian world. So I'm so happy to share this space with both of you unicorns. So Rachel, I'm gonna start with you. Can you tell us our audience a bit more about yourself? Hi, I'm Rachel. I am the teen librarian here at the Richmond branch. I was born and raised and still live in San Francisco. And that's that's pretty much me in a nutshell, actually. Thank you. How about Ayana? Hi, everyone. My name is Ayana Thompson. I am a elementary school librarian here in San Francisco at Tenderloin Community School. And I also am born and raised here in San Francisco. And I'm proud to be a unicorn librarian. <laughs> Yes, and I'm Jason Hill, and I was not born here, but I was, um, I grew up in a small town in Michigan, um, one of the few Black families there, so we could, we'll be talking about a little bit about more of that as we go along in this presentation, um, but I do want to talk about Black joy and what Black joy means to all of us. Um, for me, Black joy is rising above, but not forgetting our struggles. Um, that go back hundreds of years and they're still present today. Um, Black Joy for me is music. So our Motown, jazz, R&B, which I love. Food, which is all the soul food from that my grandma used to make, my daddy's mom, um, and dance. It's all those things that fill our hearts with a little bit of sunshine. Um, it's For me, it's also embracing all of who I am as a Black and as a Thai man and giving all those sides some love. Mm. Um, who would like to go next? Ayana, how about you? What does Black Joy mean? Um, all of the things that you said, um, the, the joy comes from, you know, knowing that you came from, you have this lineage and all, your, all of those things are part of you and, and having joy in that identity um, and celebrating, you know, celebrating those traditions, soul food, right? Eating, dancing, music, all of that. Um, and knowing that your people created all of that and keep making something out of nothing that brings me joy all the time. Um, and being comfortable, feeling comfortable in your skin and safe also is something that I think is expresses black joy, just that you can be free, you know, the freedom to just be who you are. So that's black joy for me. Yeah, which wasn't always easy, right, for us right, probably exactly. growing up, like having to always kind of protect ourselves. And um, and not always knowing, like, that's like, I think that's part of it is like, when you learn that I, you know, this is where I'm from, and these are the people that I kind of stand, you know, I stand on their shoulders. Um, you, when you bring awareness to like uh, that lineage, I think that gives you confidence. Yeah. How about Rachel? Tell us about Black Joy. Um, for me, Black Joy has always 
it just meant love, loving the community, loving the, all the different cultures that are represented within the diaspora of Blackness. It, it means music, it means laughter, it means connectivity, it means art, it just means so much. And I think it's so, so incredibly important that kids see joyful representations of themselves. Now you answered my next question with that, like what do we as librarians and educators do to promote Black joy to students? Yeah, definitely a lot more picture books highlighting just like the happy moments, like having soul food Sundays or um, dance bands or drum lines, all of those beautiful Black moments are so important for kids to see because I feel like so often we're always shown these images of here's Harriet Tubman, who is a boss leader, by the way, <laughs> but <laughs> we need to see more than struggle. We need to see everyday happy moments. I agree because, you know, it, when Black History Month comes along, I know in the school that you're right, it's always Harriet Tubman, it's Rosa Parks, it's Martin Luther King Jr., all bosses, like we say. All of them. Um, <laughs> all of them, but yeah, I feel like there also needs to be more of the joy. Ayana, do you have anything to share? Because I know with, with you at SFUSD, you deal with students on a whole different level than we would as public librarians. And I agree with that. Yeah, they need to see the everyday joy of just, we do build connections with just people, Black people, we do the same things, get the same um, joy from, you know, playing outside and running around and doing all of those things. And we don't always see that. Um, and I also think that, you know, just showing that diversity in books and film or whatever, whatever I bring to them in the library, I try to show that diverse perspective. Um, also introducing them to, well, there's so many new books out right now, right? About, you know, all of these unsung heroes um, that all of these hidden figures that they, that I didn't know about myself. So that's exciting to introduce them to those people and to be able to share those books with them too, to just broaden, you know, make, it's so expansive, this art, our history. Yeah. So that's, that's fun for me to get, to, have, to bring all these new books into school. And I found, um, I'd love to hear from you about growing up, like how, what kind of books did you have? Did you have a lot of books that you, that had people that looked like you. I mean, I know I didn't, I have a joke that Encyclopedia Brown is like the brownest thing I had <laughs> growing up in a, you know, Encyclopedia Brown isn't even brown, but that's, um, I had nothing. There was just no where I grew up. And so I'm excited to be here and talk about some of our favorite books. Um, how about you growing up? Like what were your, the books that you had or the books that you wish you would have had? You know, and I didn't really think about it. I didn't really think about it. But when you when people ask, did I see myself in books? I I didn't. You know, I can't think of a book. I think of the little girl from Quarter the Quarter Word, the Bear books. Do you remember? Oh, mm -hmm. oh yeah. She was a little brown girl, or yeah, she had like wavy hair like me. Um, yeah. But no, there was there wasn't. Right. There was not that representation. Or snowy day. Oh, it's snowy day, right? Snowy day. Right. And, that is an, and that's another thing, like us, like being mixed, I definitely didn't get that book. I didn't read books that show, showed my experience. Right. How about Rachel? Do you have anything to share about that? Um, I can't remember a single book that I read as a child that actually was a representation of myself. I do remember having picture books and occasionally coloring in the, the little characters so they look like me. <laughs> <laughs> My own books, not library books, of course. No, no, we don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think I read a book where someone who looked like me was the main character until maybe I was 13. Mm -hmm. And that was my foray into the urban fiction genre. <laughs> Yeah, do you remember the title of that book? Fly Girl. Girl. Fly Girl. Fly Tyree, yeah. <laughs> nice. And urban literature is a whole other subject to talk about. But um, we're going to talk about the little kids, the, the, oh, yeah. the youth books today. Um, so why don't we get started? Want to talk about some books? 
Let's do it. Awesome. So we kind of work together to choose um, all the books we're going to talk about. Um, and then at the end, we'll get into Coretta Scott King Award books. But we're going to start with some picture books and move our way to young adult novels. So here we go. This one that I'm going to share first with the, with the all of us is, I just can't get enough of it. It's um, The Me I Choose to Be. And it's by Natasha Anastasia Tarpley. It's illustrated by Regis and Karan Bethencourt and published by Little Brown and Company. Um, I just think it encapsulates pure black joy. Um, the photos are amazing. They're so creative. The message of you can be anything you choose to be is one that all black kids, BIPOC kids should hear. Um, it lets kids know that they can be builders and messengers or messengers of hope, artists, and they can even be not that cool. And I'm going to show you this picture because I think he's pretty cool, but the page says you could even be not that cool. And he's a little like nerd in the best way. <laughs> I love it. And there's so many more awesome pictures, which you can see. Um, love, 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 love this book. I want to frame every one of those pictures and put it on my wall. Um, how about you all, Rachel? What do you? What was your feelings when you read this? It is such an adorable book, and I had the same thing. I want to frame each and every picture in that book and want to put it like all around my baby's room because I was like, he should grow up seeing this amount of black joy every day. That'd be awesome. Have them like on the ceiling or something. Yeah, <laughs> like wake up the and, like <laughs> <laughs> or one of the mobiles. Make the mobile out of it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And Ayana, about you, what did you feel? It's funny because I, I thought about, oh, this would have been a great like photo project for the month or, you know, beyond, and beyond like this is something that I would want to get, um, have at the school. Because I've read the book to kids and they're like, I had a kid say, so turn to the person next to them and say like, so who's the me you choose to be? And they were like, I want to be the one with, you know, in, um, with the stars or the one, I want to be a unicorn. It was just all of the kids were like this, you know, it set them, put them in their imagination. And like, they started talking about what they want to be when they grow up. And like, I like that one, the, that doctor and the, what was she like an astronaut? Yeah. Where their hat, it's really cool. She's half and half. Um, so it got a, a nice conversation started and it would just be a cool little photo collage to have of, of the students at the school. Yeah, you read this they to your love, students. I did. I did. They loved and, the photographs. They were like, can you turn it back? Can I see that one? Really that one where she's like half, she's a half doctor, half whatever she is on the other side. Okay. Wish I could find it, but you have to check it out. So you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm curious though, um, if you have white students in your classes and. My school is, I, we have a handful. And I'm curious if, if they if they were in the class that you read this to, like, was there a response to that? Well, I've read it to, so, no, all, you know, in fact, the girl, the, the first grader was a first grader. She is, I believe she's a Latina. She's the one that asked the person next to her. So who is the me you choose to be? And I don't think that class even has, has it has one African-American kid that was not there that day. Oh. So this is a whole, you know, so it speaks to all, to, to all, to everyone. Yeah, it really does. It's, it's super beautiful. We're going to come back to that one, though. You'll see at the end, mm -hmm. we come back to that one again, because it's so awesome. Um, next one, you all, some of you may know this one. Um, it's been around and it's magnificent. It's magnificent homespun brown. And uh, this one is... Um, by Samara Koldoyan, illustrated by SFPL's 2021 Summer Stride artist, Kehlani Juanita. It's published by Tilbury House Publishers. Um, we're gonna start with Rachel on this one and you can tell us what you thought of it. Oh my gosh, it's the cutest story. I absolutely love how it flows. It's my kids, um, he's under one. So when he could pay attention to something, I'm always incredibly impressed. And he was able to pay attention to that story perfectly. That's awesome. And see, see himself in it, right? Exactly. <laughs> so how about Ayana? What did you think? I agree with Rachel. The flow of it is just, 
I mean, it flows in and out of like a, it's, it's a poem, right? Mm -hmm. um, just the way she describes like drinking, like just the little things going to the beach or like drinking hot chocolate or, you know, playing in the leaves. It's just so like the language is so rich in, in detail. <laughs> like I would never <laughs> think of that and right. all the way she describes Brown. Um, and then I read her, the author's note in the back and she was like, she wrote it for, and I had a connection to, to this because she, it was a deeply personal reflection and she is mixed. So this was her way of kind of reflecting on her past. And then also um, she wanted to have some children connect to feeling painfully out of place as she did. So I thought when I, cause I've read this over and over again, like the more I read it, I'm like, oh my goodness, like her Brown, like she really connected that to her past and it gave her power, like her thundering, her thundering Brown, like my power smooth creamy brown like my laughter like the way she describes her brown and she connects that to her, ident her identity is very powerful it's beautiful yeah it's a beautiful beautiful book. i wish i had a book like this growing up for sure um because i you know we recall being made to feel less than because of our color when we're well at least i did when i was younger and so um and i think as many kids do today so a book like mm. this is magical um, it celebrates all shades of brown. I feel like um, it has a really diverse and inclusive cast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I really love the one, um, the little girl who's with her brother who's in a wheelchair. Uh -huh. And she has the skates at her feet. She has Band-Aids on her knees. They're mm -hmm. eating like candy apples. Uh -huh. um, and she's radiant, radiant brown, like it says. Radiant mm -hmm. brown like my skin. Mm -hmm. So um, beautiful, beautiful book. So we've got two beautiful ones already, so... Um, let's move on to the next one. Love this one. So it's R E S P C T. <laughs> Find out what it means to me. It's respect. Um, Aretha Franklin, Queen of Soul by Carol Boston Weatherford and illustrated by Frank Morrison. Um, uh, this is really a love letter to Aretha Franklin, who I think every Black child, every child should listen to some Aretha and get that in their life. Um, I love how each page spells out a word that describes her journey. Um, let's see. Like voice, and it'll spell it out, V-O-I-C-E. Aretha's voice resounds with color and clarity, spanning three plus octaves, the maestros all agree. Um, and they're very short kind of explanations, but it really gives, a for little kids, a pretty in-depth history of Aretha. Um, and I didn't realize from the, I realized after reading this book that she recorded her first gospel album at 14 years old, which mm -hmm. like, kind of blew my mind. Um, what about you, Ayana? What did you? I love that. I, I love this, the kind of just like word association, like anything that you can think of when you think of Aretha Franklin, like voice, there's Detroit, gifted, like all of those words that describe her. Uh, yeah. They give a little just a little snippet of like all everything that she was about. And of course, I, I love that Frank Morrison is one of my favorites. So these drawings just add, I mean, they're just beautiful. Yeah. It's a beautiful book. And I always think when I read it, like I wish, <laughs> I, you know, you want to sing it like R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Like <laughs> <laughs> I do, I'm like, <laughs> but it doesn't all, it doesn't always work. <laughs> How about Rachel? I loved it so much and I learned new things about Aretha Franklin from it. It's like you said, like she recorded her first gospel album at 14, did not know that. And um, I really love the song list in the back of the book. That that was a highlight for me because then I went and listened to them all and then went on like a whole Aretha binge singing, dancing around the house. Nice. I made a note about that of the same thing. <laughs> The, her greatest hits at the end and I was like make a playlist and dance to it play yeah. it for your kids mm -hmm. give them some Aretha in their life mm -hmm. I love me some Aretha I, I haven't love. read that one but that's definitely something I will do to when I share this with the students is to put on that playlist yes that's a yes. good idea that is an awesome idea I actually play Motown when I do my well, when I was doing story times I would play Motown and there was mm -hmm. always some Aretha so getting the Motown into those kids' ears. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> okay, we're going to move on to some young readers. So those are the picture books that we really liked. Um, let's start with um, Ways to Grow Love. It's a Ryan Hart story by Renee Watson, who we all love, and illustrated by Nina Mata. And who do I want to go? Ayana, do you want to start off? Sure. So if you read, what is the first one? Um, Ways to Make Sunshine. This is the the sequel to that so they it follows ryan hart and this time she's um she's going to fifth grade so it's the summer of her fifth grade and she's going on a, a camping trip and it's about you know friendships and family her mom is having another baby and this is just about her working through all of that so you know i'm elementary school kids can really relate to it she has a friend that shows up at camp that's she doesn't really or i shouldn't say a friend it's not a friend it's a person that she doesn't want to be there and you find out if they they work it out but this is they compare this to the Ramona Quimby series mm -hmm. um so she kind of you know she so she gets into a little mischief when she's at camp and um she's just really sweet this is a it's a really sweet character she's really close to her family she has an older brother that like you know they have a love-hate relationship um so I really love that about it and then it also shows all of that black joy like all of the the traditions that they have like her grandmother braiding her hair or like her mom you know taking her to the farmer's market like all of those things they capture in in this story in the series yeah i'm rachel um i definitely loved the love aspects mm -hmm. i love that it shows that deep family love I think that's so 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 incredibly beautiful and like I mentioned before like for me black joy is it's love so this book definitely hit that for me and I love the little mention that she loves like checking out armfuls of books from the library like I was like I made a note of that too yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> we all made a note about the <laughs> she's doing the summer reading program she's yes. single yes. right yeah but she she gets mad because um her mom can't take her because mm -hmm. she's feeling really morning sickness. So she's like, I want to go get all my books though. <laughs> and that's the first chapter, right? Like, yeah. The first I'm chapter is at the library. So I was like, I'm going to love this book <laughs> right away. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Um, I wanted to ask both of you, like, how do you feel about, Ayana, you mentioned it's like the Ramona Quimby. Um, I feel like, what do you think if, like school should maybe like add this to their collections. Do you think like instead of Ramona Quimby, why can't we do Ryan Hart? You know what? They had they this is part of the I am proud to say that San Francisco Unified School District has gotten on the I don't I don't want to say that. they they are now promoting and putting into the curriculum that they're making diverse books. So this is actually the first one is in one of the units. And I think it's a con, you know, we're constantly trying to figure out or, or to find new books that are representative of the people at our schools. And so this is one of the titles, this series. That's um, awesome to hear. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so it is, ha I mean, it's, it's happening. It's happening. I think that there's, there's a more of an awareness now. Right. Yeah. Cool. Um, Rachel. What do you think about that? I think that's great because I personally did not enjoy reading Ramona Quimby when I was a kid. <laughs> so knowing that kids are now going to be reading Ryan Hart makes me really excited. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, well, we'll move on um, to New Kid by Jerry Kraft and it's um, with color by Jim Callahan and published by Harper. Um, and this is a middle grade graphic novel and kind of all about fitting in. Mm -hmm. um, for me, so many parts were relatable, especially when Jordan and Drew, they're the friend, Jordan's the main character and then Drew is his um, black friend. And they discuss how they are treated differently as the few kids of color. And when one of the white teachers calls Drew DeAndre, <laughs> like, you know, there's all the like black names and the teachers <laughs> are calling them that, but they kind of laugh about it because they both understand that and they get it. Um, and there's so many lessons to be learned in this book. And I think it's a great book that can be used in classrooms. And maybe Ayana can touch on that because maybe it is being used in classrooms um, to start conversations about race and bullying and mm -hmm. classism. Um, and it's without being intimidating for kids, I think. 
Yeah, so. I think it's really relatable in that way. Just about, I mean, just because it's like you're, it is the message that you can't judge somebody by the way they look, right? You have, you know, they figure out, I don't want to give it away, but you know, you have, you're pre, if you're, you're making these judgments and actually that's not what this person is about at all. Um, I love how they have, he has this little list of like, this is how you behave in this part of town, right? And this is what I do in this part of town. And so it shows how, you know, kids often have to navigate that, right? That's part of growing up. That's part of growing up as a, a black person or person of color is that you have to be able to be in these different spaces and learn how to be. Right, yes. I'm Rachel. I was actually going to touch on that one. Yeah. I thought that was one of the things that I found incredibly heartbreaking on a certain level about the book, just because I was like, dang, like kids shouldn't have to code switch like that. Mm -hmm. But I did find great joy in this book because I loved how realistic it was and how their friendship is and that he's not just a supporting character. Mm -hmm. He's a character in his own right. He has his own character development. He has his own character progression. He has his own story. So I thought that was really beautiful. Yeah, which goes into the sequel, I believe. There's a second book. Um, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Class. 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 Yeah. Class. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, the book characters were really diverse and fleshed out, I agree. Yeah. So, um, we're getting through these. So we're gonna go, let's switch to YA. This is Rachel's territory. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm gonna let you start with Love is a Revolution. It's a teen novel by Renee Watson, who we just spoke about on Ways to Grow on Love. Um, it's published by Blues, Bloomsbury YA. Yeah, so Love is a Revolution is this beautiful story about this girl, I believe her name is Nina. Naya. Naya, there we go. <laughs> And she goes to an open mic night one night and her cousin is a totally woke individual. Very, this is how we should all hold ourselves. This is how we should carry ourselves. This is bad. This is good. And she ends up trying to go through this journey of discovery to figure out if she wants to be the woke black girl or if she just wants to be her own version of a black girl. And I thought her journey was so absolutely amazing and beautifully done. I totally agree. How about Ayana and then I'll go last. Yeah, I I loved this book. It made me, I was like, oh, if I taught high school or something, I would, I would totally want to tell, like read this book or share this book. It's a it's a love story, right? It's a love story about the character falling in love with herself. Um, and there's a you know, there's a boy, um, but just her journey about learning to love who she is, and then also that she can be you know, you, you can have pieces of, other, you know, you can have pieces of yourself that are, are the woke part, right? And you can have pieces yeah. of yourself that want to like listen to stuff that the woke part would say, don't listen to that, right? Because it's, right. you know, degrading or whatever it is. Um, so I thought that that was, that's a struggle that a lot of us have, right? Mm -hmm. um, to just, you know, just figuring out a place that we fit into and learning to to love all of the parts of ourselves that maybe we this group wouldn't approve of. And I think that, that I, I just, I loved, I love this. I was like, make it into a movie is what I thought. Oh, me oh too. My gosh, <laughs> yes. it's like, and it's like a love story. It's a love letter to New York too. Just the yes. way it was written. Yes, it made me miss living in New York yeah. a lot. Um, I wrote a few, pass or noted some passages um, it was remember yourself, honor yourself, critique mm -hmm. yourself, love yourself. Um, there is another quote from the book, self-love is radical love. Um, and these are things that Naya struggles with throughout the book. Yeah, her little um, to-do lists are so Her to-do lists, yeah, yeah. she's to-do lists. Um, songs, she's really into music. Um, it's such a beautiful book, I think, and a great love story. Um, oh, and the library plays a role. Remember, there's a library. Oh, yeah, there's a library. library. Yeah, they don't, they don't, the whole, yeah. <laughs> Renee Watson loves yeah. her some libraries. So, 
Um, we're going to move on. It's conscious of the time here. So Charming as a Verb by Ben Felipe, published by Bowser and Bray. Um, who wants to start this one? I can start it. <laughs> I guess. Um, this is another teen novel. It's a coming of age of sorts. Um, it has Henry Halty Haltawanger is the main character's name. He's charming, and but he has this little hustle that he has um, involving a, a pet walking company he has for rich white folks in New York City. Um, and he meets his match in Corbin Troy, who's a um, student at his school. And they both have this hustle that they pull on each other and it has some interesting effects. It's cute, it's a cute love story. Another one that is in New York. <laughs> mm. um, and it does have some diverse characters also that I, I and inclusive that I think are great. Um, another, like I said, another book that makes me miss the vibrant streets of New York. <laughs> How about um, Rachel? Um, I think one of my favorite things about this book is his falling in love with his family history to a degree, because at first he's, he's very accepting of the fact that he comes from immigrant parents and he thinks it's great. And toward the end, he really starts to realize how much his parents have done for him and how much their love has kept him afloat and kept him moving through the world. And I thought that was a really lovely addition to the story and him just falling in love with himself. I thought that was great. And it was Haiti, right? His family. Yeah, his family's from Haiti. I agree. Ayana, what did you feel about this? I love this book too. It, it's also like a love story. Um, and I love the strong relationship that he had with his parents. And it tells that different side of, of his experience as a, as a Black person here having immigrant parents. Um, and there's that line where he has this tension with his father, but his father tells him that he's, he adores him. Um, no matter what, you know, what mistakes that you made, whatever mistake you made, you're my kid, I adore you. And I, I love that line. And that, that's, some, that's also showing black joy. You don't often hear those words. I mean, I mean, that was something that I adore my kid. Like I need to say that to you more. I adore you. Um, oh. But that relationship, <laughs> right? I know, I know well, it makes me want to cry when I say I it, but I, I love that line. A, I'm going to bust a feeling. Um, <laughs> and I, I liked how they had, he did make a mistake and he, it was a happy ending, right? That doesn't always happen, right? He got some redemption and some, and, and people gave him a break for something that could have ruined him. And I think that that's very, you know, that's very relatable because that it doesn't, that is a happy that is a happy ending and it doesn't often happen. Right. And there's a um, you know, there's a story about the pressure of getting into college too. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna be relatable yeah. to a lot of kids out there who he wants to go to Columbia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. So there's that storyline too. But yes, wonderful book. Um, I agree. Um, those are the trope books that we've chose mm -hmm. together. Um we're going to switch gears now and go into, um, we'd like to finish the conversation by sharing this year's Coretta Scott King Awards. Um, and those are given out by the American Library Association. And as I say, these annual awards are given to outstanding African-American authors and illustrators of books for children and young adults. Um, they demonstrate an appreciation of African-American culture and universal human values. The awards commemorate the life and work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and honors his wife, Mrs. Coretta Scott King, for her courage and determination to continue the work for peace and world brotherhood. And we're just gonna share some slides here. Give me one moment. Um, so we've been talking about Black Joy, but um, just to give you a heads up, some of these books are about Black Joy, they're about the history and some of the struggle. Um, the first book is Unspeakable, the Tulsa Race Massacre, published by Car Book, Car Books, and it um, wins the award for both its author, Carol Boston Weatherford, and its illustrator, Floyd Cooper. And this gives a powerful look at the often forgotten 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre. And that was one of the worst incidents of racial violence in our nation's history. Um, 
I did not, a lot of these um, are new, so um, we have read some of them, but some are just gonna kind of give you a synopsis of them. Um, did either of you actually read Unspeakable, I believe? I read that too. Oh, yeah, I went to, my cla to, the, to a class last year. And it was just like many of these books, it's a new book and you know, pe the teachers had never heard of this, of the Tulsa Race Massacre. So it, it's one, of, it, it also sp talks about, you know, they called it the Black Wall Street. So <laughs> there's joy in that, there's power in knowing that we did as a community come from, you know, we were able to build our own wealth and we created this and the tragedy of some, you know, white folks came in and, and tore it down. So I think that it's important. You know, these things are, there is struggle in it. There's struggle and heartbreak, but that we are capable of doing that and that we did that and that, you know, people go through great lengths to destroy these things is a, is a powerful, um, it's something powerful for our students to, to know about their yes. history. And the word, and it's very, you know, it's, the story is very simple. We don't go into too much detail. There's an author's note in the back. And then of course, Floyd Cooper's beautiful drawings yeah. and capturing the expressions and the emotions on the faces. It's really good book. Yeah, pretty heavy topic. Yeah. Um, I'm just ask you two to jump in if you have, and I'm gonna just kind of go through the books and give you a two second beat. And if you wanna jump in, please do so. Um, so the John Steptoe Award for New Talent for Illustrator goes to our lovely, the me I choose to be. Um, and I think it truly deserves this award. Like all of us say, we can't get enough of it. Um, and the John Steptoe Award for New Talent author goes to the teen novel, Me Moth by Amber McBride and published by Firewell and Friends. And a quick synopsis is while Moth grieves the death of her family, she crosses paths with a young boy and they, be, they both begin the journey to find their roots. I'm halfway through that one and it has made me cry twice. Oh. But it is so incredibly beautifully written. I can see why it won the award. And there are little elements of joy in it. There's, um, she's a dancer and it's mentioned in the first chunk, so it's not a spoiler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the way how she describes dancing and rhythms and music is absolutely stunning. And it's all told in verse, so it's really beautiful. Thank you. So um, the author honor books are next up. Um, the first one is Home is Not a Country by Safia Alilo, published by Make Me a World. Um, and this is a YA novel also. It's a novel in verse, and it's about family identity and finding yourself in the most unexpected places. Um, the second one is Revolution in Our Time, The Black Panther Party's Promise to the People by Kekla Magoon, published by Candlewick Press. And this gives an essential, essential account of the history of the Black Panthers. And then we have The People Remember by E.B. Zaboy and illustrated by Love Is Wise, published by Balzer and Bray. And this is a debut picture book that uses the principles of Kwanzaa to talk about the history of African-Americans. Let's go to our illustrator honor books. These I have a few of. So the first one, I just got my hold today. So when the awards come out, you have to kind of put holds on them because everyone wants to check out the award books. So Nina, a story of Nina Simone illustrated by um, the lovely Christian Robinson who SFPL has much, much, much love for, and written by Tracy and Todd. It's published by G.P. Putnam's Sons Books for Young Readers. And I just had a chance to glance at it quickly. And what I did notice first is it doesn't really shy away from um, things like racism that Nina Simone had to go through. I kind of stopped at this page, which is it says white only, colors only, colored only. And it just kind of describes how um, this white kid was no longer allowed to play with the black girl because of the color lines. Um, and so I know this is gonna be a touching book. I'm excited to get into it. 
And then we have Salt Food Sunday, illustrated by C.G. Esperanza, written by Winsome Bingham, published by Abram Books for Young Readers. I read this a couple of times because I love my soul food. Um, there's a scene where um, they're making collard greens and they have to, if you've ever made collard greens, you have to get so many of them because they shrink down to almost nothing. And you have to scrub all the dirt so you don't make grainy collard greens. And I just remember making those with my grandma in the kitchen. So it just brought back some really great memories for me. And then, so definitely check that out. So if you're gonna be hungry afterwards. Um, and the last one we have is We Wait for the Sun, illustrated by Raisa Foguera and written by Dovey Johnson Roundtree. And it's published by Roaring Book Press. And this is a young girl named Dovey May and her grandma go deep into the woods to find delicious blackberries. So it's a little adventure. But as nighttime approaches, Dovey gets pretty frightened of the dark. But grandma turns, it in, turns the night into a wonderful, magical adventure. And so those are all our books. That's our book talk for today. Um, so we got through it. And um, well, thank you both for today's amazing conversation. Um, I don't know if you have any words of farewell to our audience, Rachel or Ayana. Just thank you guys all for watching. And all of these books are such amazing books and they're all available at the San Francisco Public Library. <laughs> Yes. Thank you all for listening, for joining us. Yeah, They're thank available you. at my library if any of my kids. <laughs> <laughs> all of the honors are there. All of the award winners are here. We just got a new shipment. So we have, yes. we just got I, Nina in Soul Food Sunday. I always loved the new shipments when I was a teacher librarian. Give me the new thank shipments of books. That. Yay. So we thank you all for sharing this space with us today. Um, if you love today's program, check out our calendar for future virtual more than a month programs. And join us next Saturday, February 26th at 11 a.m. for the Alphabet Rockers, who will be sharing their new book, You Are Not Alone, followed by some rock and dancing. Um, so that's all for today, folks. Thanks for sharing the space. Take good care of yourselves. Stay safe. And we hope to see you at another library program soon. Thank you. Bye.